What's up, everybody? Max Cavalera, Soul Flight, right here in Toronto, and you're watching Fight Music. Tour is going great, man. It's a great package. You know, we have Shatterson, which is a new band. Uh, Soil Work uh, from Sweden. They're kick ass, really, really good band. And Soulfly, we're playing uh, everything from all of our records, a, a bit of some old Sabotura, and seven new songs out of Archangel. So it's a really, really full set list, full experience. Oh, well, it's, it's a really, I think, interesting record. It's our 10th album, and I think it's very extreme in a way. Like, it's very, in the influence from Archangel are more of, from extreme metal, like Malakash and Behemoth and things like that. And um, it's going great live. We, we started a show, we, we sold our souls to metal, and we play Archangel, Ishtar Rising. And then uh, we play uh, Sodomites, uh, uh, Shamash, Bethlehem's Blood, and Titans. So I never played that many new songs uh, with a new album before. So this is the first time. And we tried it out, and it was really cool. The, the, the fans really loved it. And I thought, this is killer. Let's, let's keep doing it. But we, kinda, we don't play them together. We mix them with the old stuff. So it, it divides, you know. So I think it's, it's cooler like that. Zion is the only one playing with us right now. Uh, Igor did the European tour, but we have Mike uh, from Havoc playing bass. Um, he just joined Soulfly. It's great, great bass player, and um, it's, this is an amazing lineup. I think it's one of the best we had. It's on fire. It's really killer. Um, I think the chemistry between us is electric. It's really good. And Zion is doing awesome on drums. He's playing is as often it's it's showing, you know, every day. He's brutalizing the drums and um, I don't know how he does it, man. You know, I get tired just looking at it. <laughs> but he does it, you know, and, and uh, people are loving it, you know, and um, it, it's fun, like a lot of um, a lot of our family travel with us. My wife is our manager, so she travels with us. Uh, my son uh, Jason is here. He does uh, uh, crew for Zion, for the drums. Um, so it's kind of like a family atmosphere on tour. It's really cool, you know, I think. I, I like that a lot about our, our, of the, uh, the vibe on the bus. And uh, it's, it's really fun, makes the tour a lot of fun. Of course, I started with Igor. Uh, I played with Sepultura with him for most of my life, and now we do Cavalera Conspiracy, and that goes really good. I'm really excited uh, for Cavalera. We have three albums now. We're gonna work on a fourth one in the future, and uh, it's great playing with Igor. And then now I'm playing with my sons. It's, it's killer. Um, um, they've been involved from the beginning because Zion's heartbeat opens Chaos AD. You know, recorded when he was <laughs> not even born yet. You know, so he was already in this in this life without even knowing. Um, and I was just really wanted, waiting for them to grow up and become musicians so I can jam with them. And that has happened now. So I, f I think it's um, for a dad. It's, it's, it makes me like super proud. That was actually Dana's idea, um, uh, Gloria's son, uh, he had the idea, uh, gave us the idea to, we, you guys should do, um, the actual lyrics, he helped me with the lyrics of Attitude, you know, writing the original lyrics, I had some quotes from him and it was really cool. And then he knew this guy Block, who was a director in California, and Block did a lot of, uh, rap videos and he knew a lot of people like Danny Trejo is on 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 a video and a couple other artists and uh um well 
he came with the idea, you guys should get the Graces, and we got in contact with them, and they were super cool, super excited, and all of them came except for um, one of them couldn't make it, but even the old men, they started are always on the video. Um, it was a great day, you know, filming with them. They were super nice, you know, super, super nice, and we took a bunch of pictures with them. Um, they were extremely friendly, and uh, and it came out really good. You know, I love the uh, the concept of us in a uh, in, in, you know in, in a ring uh, playing the music with the fans on the, on the screaming, and then having the fight scenes, and then Danny Trejo is there. You know, it's uh, uh, I think the singer of Two was there too. Like, and there's some guys from Fear Factory are all in the crowd. You know, so. It was fun. It was, a, it was a, one of my favorite fun days I had in a long time. I haven't uh, myself. I, 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 you know, I like watching. My son Zion is really interested. He watches a lot of MMA and. Uh, you know, he's the one that actually told me about Anderson Silva, you know, and, and I, I went to check it out. And, and it actually was the, the fight that he broke his leg, which sucked, you know. That was, that was the first fight that saw him. I never saw him uh, fight before. And that was the fight, that, it was like one minute in the fight, he breaks his leg. It's like, oh my God, this is horrible, you know. And, uh, and But we, we know that, that's what I was telling you about Mark. Mark Reese, our guitar player. He's good friends with the Diaz brothers, and they're big Soulfly fans both of them and I know they're kind of like the bad boys of the MMA right they got the attitude going and all that so it's perfect <laughs> that they like Soulfly. The other thing I hope to do one day is writing a song for a fighter you know that's one of my ideas I love that I love to, to write a, a metal song uh, because I know that some of the fighters use Sepultura stuff when they fight I seen some videos of, of I forgot the name of the guy the Brazilian guy but he entered uh, using, uh, uh, I think was Roots and Rata Mahata. And that was really cool, you know, that I was like, man, maybe I can, I'll just write, you know, maybe for the Diaz brothers, you know, we can write a metal song for them so they can use it when they fight, get them pumped. <laughs> We've gotten a bunch of those ads, Teenager drinking involving, of course, you know, a lot of, you know, when you drink, it leads to that eventually for some reason. And, um, you know, like the one I think I, I talk about on, on, on the book is, is a guy that was really bugging me all night, calling me a rock star and all that. And then, uh, you know, I was really telling him to stop, man, this is not going to end up good for you because I'm already getting loaded, uh, you know, on Brazilian hardcore. Uh, booze, and I think I was doing coke at that time too. So I was like high on coke. She's like, "This is not gonna end up good for you, man," because I'm supercharged. And it didn't. I beat the shit out of the guy, and uh, you know, next day my, my shoes are full of blood and that kind of stuff, you know. But um, I mean, I don't know, man. There's there's a line, you know. I think uh, the circle pits are look very violent from the outside but it's actually like a way to take your anger out. I think it's a healthy way to get your anger out, your, your aggression out, you know. Nobody's really beating each other up, but it looks like that from the outside. But, you know, I understand the, the psychic of the mosh pit, of the circle pit. You know, I understand why they do it, because the frustration, you wait, you know, you hate your job, you hate your boss. You hate your life, and you want to. When you go to a metal show, you, all that shit just comes out. You know, you want to let it out on the, on the ground. You know, so you let it all out on the circle pit, and it's perfect. Like our music is actually perfect for that. You know, so um, I see why people do it. You know. For me, I don't, I don't find it difficult to uh, of, of liking. I love metal, you know, and I think the older I get, I get into even more metal, more extreme metal. I like the heavier band, the better, you know. 
uh, a lot of you know, genocide pact and homewrecker and and uh, noise him and full of hell and you know Zabalba, uh, young and in the way and uh, yeah I, I I love I love uh, a lot of the extreme metal that's is going on today and so that part is easy you know uh, the hard part is surviving you know because you don't sell records and you know a lot of people don't buy records anymore so that's that's the hard part that's why we have to tour so much you know which doesn't bother me because I love touring I'm born for this life uh, I don't mind the touring I think touring is great it's great to see the world we see a lot of fans around the world and uh, I don't mind the the lifestyle the diet and it's, the, it's hard to keep a good diet and stuff you know but um uh, I think uh, you know, I try real hard to maintain my projects really uh, on the edge, you know, Cavalier Conspiracy, it's very special with my brother, Killer BQ, he's got the Mastodon guys, the, the Lingerscape plan guys, and we that's a, a, a super special project too, and Soulfly, of course, is my main thing, you know, that I pay more attention to it, and I'm very pleased with Archangel, I think it came out really good, and we're going to probably tour for Archangel all uh, all throughout this year and next year. Well, most of the writing I do is is for the record, you know. Like that's why I don't write on 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 tour. Um, I can't seem to get focused enough on tour to get to write on tour. So I don't even bring my equipment on tour to write. I like to write at home, um, where I'm, and I'm, I I like when I'm writing for a specific record because I, I kind of know where is going you know so it's a cavalera record okay this is all for cavalera so it's all gonna go in and a lot of times you have a direction that the album is gonna go like archangel had a biblical references and it had a kind of uh, a theme behind the record and uh cavalera pandemonium was about the state of the world being a you know total pandemonium so it was like so you gotta get that state of mind and then the riffs come in that's the part that i do is the riffs I write all the riffs that end up being on the record, and uh, which I think it, it, for me is my favorite thing is writing riffs. I like, I love doing that on my own. I, um, I I can sit with the guitar and write riffs without even having to, you know. But when you're doing for for a specific record, you get even more motivated to because you know it's going in, into a certain album, and a lot of people around the world is gonna hear, you know. So it's. Uh, it gets me pumped when I'm writing for a certain record. I love that idea of, of the brotherhood in metal, and I think we need more of that, you know, and I think I wish more bands would do that. Uh, I see more other bands doing Lamb of God had uh, Greg and, and uh, Chino from the Deftones on their album, and um, Gojira had Randy from Lamb of God on their record, and uh, so it, it, it's starting to more people. Uh, Archangel. We had Todd from Nails and Matt from King Parrot, a couple of newer bands. Some of my older records, I had Tom Mariah, um, Corey from Slipknot, and Sean Lennon, you know, and, and uh, Chino from the Deftones, and uh, David Morbid Angel, uh, Travis from Cattle Decapitation, and uh, a number of, of, of guests. I think it's great, you know, I love that. Working with Mark is really good. You know, we, I've been with Mark now since 2004, so it's a long time. He's, he's the longest member in Soulfly um, by far, you know, and I think he's the longest guitar player I play in my whole life with, you know, so it's a, it's a very solid relationship. And we work really good together on and off um, the music world, you know, like when we're not. Um, touring and stuff, we're still really good friends and we kept the friendship going and when we are together, when we're creating music in the studio, it's, it's a, an amazing chemistry. Um, my riffs and what he puts on top of it is just made for each other, you know, it's just, it's beautiful. It's like amazing to watch come into life. Um, 
And uh, I always really, the beginning of Soulfly, we never really had a guitar player like that that we were looking for. And we had, we tried a couple of guys like Mikey and Logan. And uh, uh, the first guitar player we had, Lucio, was a Brazilian guy, did an amazing job on the first album, but he couldn't join the band because he was already with a Brazilian band. So when I found Mark, it was super special. I felt totally lucky I found this guy. and. Uh, He's an amazing guitar player, which he is, you know, and very skilled, very... He can play flamenco, he can play acoustic, he can play electric, he, he can shred, but he's also very tasteful with what he does, you know, it's not just shredding, he's got taste on, on, on what he puts on, on, uh, on the Soulfly stuff, so it's, it's pretty kick-ass.